item. And so it would be, see the space between the two vocal units? That's called the glottis. So normally when we talk about the glottis, it's either open or it's closed. In this case, it's slightly open, okay? There is only one muscle that will open that, and that's this pair, the, the um, posterior cranial arachnoids. And that's important because in the normal reflex, all the muscles close those ligaments. They shut them down so nothing can go down by mistake. That's part of the swallowing reflex. And if you were to paralyze these muscles or damage the uh, um, innervation to them, you would not be able to open the glottis and can't breathe. And then they're going to have to trick you. Okay. Um, the other muscles are named based on where they attach. See these cross mu muscles here? They attach to the arachnoids on either side, so they're called the transverse arachnoids. And then we have these angled ones, or the oblique arachnoids. And like I said, anything that's not this pair is going to close the um, close the glottis, uh, close the opening into the um, into the trachea. Okay. Then there's this set of muscles that actually run parallel to the vocal ligament. So we're looking down from the top now. Um, and so this is the vocalis muscle. And that's the one that will slack. So that helps control the tension on vocal parts. So when we talk, changing pitch is about the way we stretch the vocal cords. Okay. This is uh, just showing you what each of the muscles do. So here's the posterior cricoid and arachnoids, the only ones that open. So the lateral and the arachnoideus, which is the transverse and um, oblique, both closed. Here's the vocalis. And then this is the cricothyroid, the one that tilts the thyroid. Okay, and I think that's the only thyroid one that you have to know. This was just another example, but it's, I don't think you really need to worry too much. Here's, here's what I was talking about with the glottis. If it's open, air can go through. If it's closed, it can't. And so by adjusting all these cartilages, you have a way to affect the, what the vocal cords are doing. We also modify voice with everything above it. So by making chambers bigger or smaller or blocking air, you can modify. That's, how, that's what speech is. Um, but the total change is going to be from changing what's going on at this point right here. Okay, now when we get to this point also, there are actually two folds here. And you can't really see it because they're, they're physically one above the other. So we have what's called a false vocal cord and a true vocal cord, or a vocal fold. So I added this just so you can get an idea. The, right here, the top one is the false one. It's also called the vestibular one. And the bottom one is the true one. So what this is, is they, they, they cut it and splayed it open. Um, the area as you enter under here is called the vestibule. So the, the one just below the vestibule is the false focal cord or the vestibular fold. Then we have this little area in between the vestibular fold and the vocal fold, and it's called the ventricle. So the other name that you'll see used for this is the ventricular fold. And I've seen her do that on her test ask you a question about the ventricular fold that everybody's going to oh. <laughs> So I just wanted to know that the ventricle is this little space between the two folds, and, and the folds are named after what's right coming immediately superior to it. So this is the vestibule, so it's above the vestibular fold, then the small space here, and you can see it kind of tucked in here on either side, is the ventricle, which sits above the ventricular or true vocal folds. So these are the ones that as you modify and modify speech, give you the ability to um, swallow. So this is kind of looking down in there. And you'll see this is that fold that helps define. So when the epiglottis folds down, it blocks this area, deflects food around, and it'll continue down into the um, esophagus. Okay. And so the only other thing I want to mention real quick is the innervation. Um, all these muscles are going to be uh, recurrent laryngeal, okay? The, the superior laryngeal comes off the vagus up high and comes in, and what it does is it aims right here at this point, see that little hole in the membrane? It's gonna hit that, and one branch is gonna be, be the internal branch. And the internal branch is just 
um, sensory and it's also uh, autonomic, so it's going to trigger glands and such. Uh, the external branch is going to come down to this muscle, which is the only one you see from the side, and that's the, um, the cricothyroid, and that's the one that tilts the voice box and starts to bump away from it. Okay, so then look real quick to see if there's anything else. The constrictors, we already talked about those. Okay, that's all I have. We're going to get into the lower respiratory. We're going to turn off Thursday. We're going to do a lot of stuff.